guys and welcome back to my channel um today on dementia tips i'm going to talk about them kind of really awkward questions that we get as carers from our loved ones you know things like what time am i going to school where's my mum when's my husband coming home of course their husband's been dead for 10 years just them sort of things how do you deal with them how do you reassure your loved one without upsetting them Brenda would ask questions like that all the time. A perfect example of this is Brenda would often stand by the front door and it would be any time of the day, morning, night, um, I'd find her kind of pacing in front of the door waiting for her husband to come home from work. Obviously her husband had been dead about maybe 12, 13 years at the time. She had forgotten that. And she also had no sense of time. So this could be four or five o'clock in the morning. It could be nine, 10 o'clock at night. It didn't matter what time of day it was. She would be waiting for George, her husband, to come home from work so she could do his dinner. She could wash his clothes, whatever it is that she was kind of worried about that she had to get done. So for me personally, there is three different ways that I would deal with this and that I have dealt with this. Um, I'm sure there's other ways of dealing with it. Uh, but these are just things that I have done in the past, not only with Brenda, but when I worked at the home. It's not going to be for everyone. Um, there's going to be, you know, ways that I dealt with things that were right for me that aren't necessarily going to be right for you and vice versa. Um, it is very trial and error. And also the three things I will talk about, I would use at different stages of the disease as well. The first being you tell them the truth. Uh, the second is distracting them um, and the third would be lying to them bear with me with the lying part it's not as bad as it sounds but they're not big fat whoppers they are little porky pies so first of all of course you can tell them the truth I would only really recommend this very early on you know the early early stages of dementia when your loved one is still your loved one, they're still the person you know and, and love and they've just become a bit forgetful because you'll often find that when they're at that stage, if you do tell them the truth, they will go, oh yeah, you know, I remember now, silly me, me and, me and my memory, especially if their loved one's been dead a long time, they're maybe not going to find it as upsetting to hear it you need to learn quite quickly what your loved one is capable of hearing um sometimes the truth just isn't what they want to hear of course that's another problem you'll find that they might not actually believe you but you as the caregiver will over time like i said trial and error over time you will kind of learn about your loved one and how they maybe deal with that sort of information and if it is in fact best to tell them the truth or not. Obviously, as time goes on, that isn't always gonna be the best way to deal with it. Brenda's memory became so short, you know, her attention span and her kind of short-term memory was so short. Um, she would ask me these questions over and over again. So to sit and tell her continuously that George had died would have just been nasty. The other two ways of dealing with it are the distracting and the lying. They are kind of the same thing. <laughs> Again, I will use the example of Brenda waiting at the front door. So if Brenda was asking, you know, where's George? You know, he, he's late for work. I need to start making his dinner. I don't know where he is, etc., etc. I would distract her. I would maybe say to her, well, Brenda, what, what time does George normally come home from work? And she would say, five o'clock. Um, and I would say to her, well, it's, it's only three o'clock. It may have been 10 o'clock at night, but she knew no different. I would maybe walk her to the fridge. Um, I would show her what food was in the fridge and say, oh, you know, this is what you could make him. Um, you know, we've got we've got some broccoli we've got some carrots we've got some you know chicken whatever and you're not actually going to make the dinner obviously but you would kind of walk them through it and it was just calming them down you know you're not telling them that they're wrong you know you're not telling them that their loved one's dead you're not upsetting them in any way you're just taking them away from that front door 
you're distracting them, um, reassuring them that George will be home from work later, but it's just a little bit early at the moment. And let's go and look and see what we're gonna make him for dinner later on in the day. You kind of have to learn to lie a little bit. You need to learn to just kind of bend things slightly. If it is nine o'clock at night and your loved one will kind of believe that it's the middle of the day, kind of got to go with that. Even if you're standing there, you're in your pajamas, <laughs> your slippers on, and you're saying to them, well, it's only 12 o'clock, it's only lunchtime, Brenda. You know, George isn't gonna be home for another five hours. You just, you kind of have to, you know, distract them and lie and lie a little bit. You know, it's not harming them. Of course, another way of distracting them is by giving them a job to do. A common one would be, I put the feather duster in her hand. Um, it sounds terrible. Um, and she would spend hours dusting the same thing over and over again. But it's horrible for us to witness, um, you know, and it would get upsetting sometimes. But, but in her world, she loved it. She was helping me clean. She was making the house nice for her husband for when he came home from work. You know, Brenda was a housewife. Um, that was what she done. So for her, she was happy dusting all day long. You know, I'd give her other jobs to do as well, but dusting was a very common one and it was an easy way to calm her down. And it was something we could do together as well. You know, I'd get the other feather duster out and we'd kind of waggle these things around together and, and get the house nice and shiny. Like I said, distracting and lying are very similar. You're not telling them really big lies, you know. You are just gonna tell them little white lies um, like it's a different time of the day. You just bend their reality a little bit. You just need to get yourself into their reality, understand what their world is like. You know, if your loved one thinks that they are a lot younger or that their spouse is still alive or that their children are still children, you just kind of got to get into their world um, and help distract them within that world. You know, Brenda could spend hours cleaning. She, you know, she thoroughly enjoyed it. She would cook, she would clean. So I would just get her to help me do those things. And all the time she was distracted doing those things, she wasn't worried about what time she had to go to school or, you know, what time George was coming home for his dinner. But I'm sure there's hundreds of different scenarios out there that you're all facing. You just need to apply that to your situation. Um, you have to be a little careful that they don't catch you out. Um, I worked out very early on that whenever Brenda would ask me, you know, where her mum was or, you know, is her mum worried about where she is, etc, etc. I would say, oh, I've spoken to her on the phone. You know, she knows that I'm with you and that you're, you're spending the day with me. I've, I've spoken to her and she would say to me, my mum's not got a phone. I think, oh, you have to be really careful, you know, because when Brenda was younger, of course her parents didn't have a phone. You know, you, know, you learn quite quickly, you know, I am I'm the kind of the younger generation and I didn't think, oh, <laughs> I mean, I knew that her mum didn't, wouldn't have had a telephone, but it just didn't occur to me because we live in the world we live in now and um so Brenda soon caught me out on that lie so you do have to be a little bit careful you just you kind of have to be a little bit mindful of what you're saying but you know I just distracted her and it kind of it never happened again because I didn't I didn't say it again so there are ways of dealing with it um like I said before there's probably other ways of dealing with it but they are the three things that I would do. Our loved ones do put us in some sticky situations sometimes. Um, you know, and a lot of the time, especially once Brenda's dementia got really bad, you know, and especially towards the end, her kind of attention span was so short. I mean, we're talking seconds. So it, it did get 
harder in some ways but easier in other ways because you could kind of distract her a lot easier um, and she wouldn't she wouldn't know and even if she did know five seconds later she wouldn't she wouldn't remember it and it, it sounds awful but that was kind of the reality of her dementia at the end um you know she was severe you know the one thing i done especially towards the end you just have to kind of if they are distressed if they are asking questions that maybe you can't answer the most important thing is that they're just they're happy and you calm them down give them a hug give them a kiss whatever um and just reassure them um, and if that means lying to them, then that means lying to them. Um, you know, there are some people that don't agree with lying to them and um, they kind of say, oh, you should tell them the truth or you should distract them or, and yeah, you, you probably you probably should distract them. But like I said before, distracting and, and lying to them kind of comes hand in hand. Um, you know, and these aren't little white lies. These aren't big fat whoppers just reassure them give them lots of love um you know if they're looking for their dead loved one their children or whatever don't correct them you know just just go with it get yourself into their mindset try and understand their world and their logic um because it is different to ours try and use these tips with that and and try and help them that's all we can do you can only do your best and you can only try um it is trial and error um you're gonna say things sometimes that they completely believe and it completely settles them and they're happy with that kind of that answer and there's gonna be other times that you say that and they're not gonna believe you and it just you have to roll with the punches just try and help them the best you can there's no kind of right or wrong to this um you know you need to know that <laughs> there you're not doing anything wrong you just you just got to go with it and just try and help them the best you can and if all else fails just make a cup of tea <laughs> but, um i hope this helps um good luck and i will see you next time bye guys